Hey gang, Private Jack here, and welcome to part two in my series on how to rig a simple airplane. Uh, in part one, what we did is we looked at the uh, aircraft, we did the anatomy of the aircraft, uh, we placed all the bones, and basically set the structure up for the airplane. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to rename all the bones and uh, get them into their proper location. So, with that, what we're going to do is we're going to carry on. Now, the aircraft itself, the way I've got it laid out is that each color indicates uh, an area of the aircraft that a bone is going to control. So, I've got multicolored aircraft here, and basically each color represents a control surface that is going to have its own bone. So, let's get on with this going to be using some uh, time-lapse video in here. You don't want to watch me rename all the bones. First one we're going to start with is off the fuselage. We've already renamed the uh, fuselage bone and we're going to work with the spinner. So type in here BIP spinner and basically I like using prefixes uh, for my bones simply due to the fact that uh, it indicates what they're for. BIP I use as a uh, bone in play. HLP I use as a helper bone and that kind of thing. So root bone, uh, we're going to get rid of that later. The wheel bone, uh, make sure you name the bones properly. This one is BIP wheel left and we want to maintain the relationship between uh, the left and right hand side of the aircraft so that uh, when we have to move a bone uh, they're going to move properly. Now I'm renaming this one uh, incorrectly simply due to the fact that I want it will show you how that actually works. So in this case I called it bop wheel right and the left side is bip reel white right. Okay into the prop now and what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually call this one BIP prop left, BIP prop right, and we'll go into uh, time lapse now. Okay, now that everything is renamed, what we have to do now is we have to position the bones so that uh, everything spins and turns and rotates properly. And we're going to start with the spinner here. And the way that I do this is I use the edges of the actual model to find a center position and place my bone head in that position. So I'm going to select the outer ridge of the spinner here. I'm going to go into Shift S and I'm going to move my cursor to the selected area and that puts it right dead center of that actual ridge. <clears throat> I'm going to select the bone and I'm going to do a Shift S and I'm going to move the selection to cursor. That's going to place the head of the bone right where that cursor is. So it's dead center in the actual spinner. Now I'm going to reselect the uh, spinner again, go back into edit mode, and I'm going to pick the top vertice of that actual circle. And the reason why I do this is simply due to the fact that sometimes a spinner will be offset uh, if you're doing a scale aircraft. Uh, anyway, let's put the cursor on that particular vertex. We'll grab the bone again. And now I'm going to select the tail of the bone. The tail is the sharp pointy end. 
and I'm going to move that tail to the cursor again. It will maintain the actual relationship of the head in the center and the tail at the tip of the actual circle. So shift S, selection to cursor, there it is. It's now straight up and down and on the actual spinner. Now if we look here, this is a straight edge so I don't have to do any adjustments. But let's say the spinner was offset like on a scale airplane. So <clears throat> What we have to do, I'm going to move the actual spinner here. So I'll go back into edit mode, grab the spinner, and I'm going to rotate it a little bit so that it's a little bit offset. There and there. And the reason why a spinner is offset is it counteracts the rotation within the engine and it... Uh, counterbalances the, uh, the the stresses on the aircraft. So what I have to do now is I have to align the bone to the rest of that particular spinner so that it will spin properly. So I'm going to select that vertice again. I'm going to select the tail and then I'm going to move that tail to the actual vertice again and here we can see that it's not um, how you would say uh, straight. If I was to spin this the spinner would actually clip into the aircraft. So what I have to do is I have to adjust the roll of the bone so that it matches the edge of the actual spinner. Okay now that that's explained, I think we can carry on with the rest of the airplane. Uh, I'm going to back everything out here and basically uh, go back into uh, get everything straight. This is a cartoon model. It's not to scale, so my spinner can be straight. I use the uh, Control-Alt-Z uh, control option in the uh, object mode and basically just back things out to the way they were. Okay, with that done, what I'm going to do now is, uh, yeah, we'll set up the one of the props and I'll show you how I do a prop and then we'll go into uh, time lapse again and carry on from there. So now that that bone's in place, what I can do is I can rescale it make the bone smaller so it's not so big just reposition it make sure it's straight now I'm going to select the bone and scale it on the z-axis so that it's a smaller bone and because it's straight up and down what will happen is it will maintain its aspect and control the bone or the uh, spinner properly Select individual origins and scale it down on the Z. There we go, nice small bone. Now for the prop, what's going to happen here is I've got a left and right uh, prop bone. I'm going to select the bottom vertices of the actual prop, place my cursor, grab the bone, and watch what happens with the right hand bone as I move the left. Shift S, selection to cursor. Go into wireframe so you can actually watch it. See the edge there? If the model is perfectly symmetrical, what should happen is the two bones will move to the, uh, to the same location on the actual uh, model. So here we can see uh, it's in the center of that one. If I select the other prop now, I can see that it is in the center of these four vertices right here. Perfect. Now to align it with the rest of the prop so that it's straight, and we'll spin the prop properly. What I do is I
select the prop again. Go into edit mode, select the edges of the end of the prop. Uh, let's get the prop first. There we go. Select the edges of the end of the prop, move the cursor to that location, grab the tail of the bone of the prop bone, and move the tail to the cursor. Now it's nice and straight. Both bones moved at the same time. I can grab the bone again now and scale it back on the x-axis because it is perfectly straight. And this is one of the reasons why I like to do my aircraft in, in flight is because the aircraft is straight and everything moves on the axis properly. Okay, let's go into uh, time lapse now and basically we'll set up the rest of the aircraft. So I've positioned the wheel bone here. Uh, we're out of time lapse for a second here. And I've moved it and notice that the right wheel bone didn't move. And like I told you before, uh, I had renamed this wheel bone uh, incorrectly just to show you that relationship aspect uh, between the two bones. So this one is called BIP left. That one is called BOP right. Uh, the relationship has been broken. So what I have to do is I have to rename the bone back to BIP. Before I do that, I'm going to back everything out. I'm going to grab that other bone now. I'm going to rename it. Call it BIP wheel right. And now when I start uh, to uh, position the bone, everything will move properly. So what I'll do is I'll select the center of the wheel and move the wheel bone into this location after I move the cursor. And you'll see that the both wheel bones move. So bingo. And what I want to do now is I want to select the top vertice of the circle place my cursor there it's dead center so that the wheels will turn properly uh, on that pivot point so if I selected an outside vertice it would uh, wobble the wheel I don't want that to happen so now that that's selected move my cursor or move my uh, tail to that location and scale it back down on the Z and my wheels will now spin properly. Okay, back into time lapse. Pop out of uh, time lapse here for a second and talk about hinge points. For this particular retract, what I want to happen is I want that retract to pivot on the actual edge of the uh, outside or on the inside of the uh, retract so the strut so I'm going to pull the bone back and that will place the pivot point for that retract right there on that edge so that the wheel will actually go into the wing based on that particular point uh, now we're going to set up the canopy and we'll talk about flaps here in a second.
Now, with the ailerons what, and the flaps, what you want to do is you want to determine where you want the actual thing to pivot. Some aircraft have the pivot point up here on the top. If that was the case, all you would do is select these two vertices. Some have it in the center, so you would select these four vertices and place your curse or place your bone in the center. And some actually pivot on the bottom hinge, uh, on the bottom of the flap. So you have to determine where you want that pivot point to be. So I want it to be in the center. Curse to selected. Grab the bone. Shift selection to cursor. There we go. And again, to make it rotate properly, what I want to do is I want to establish the center of the actual aileron. Curse selected. Place the head of the bone or the tail of the bone in the center of the flap on the trailing edge. One to seven. It's straight up and down the x-axis. And again, this is where you get into the intricacies of rolls and whatnot else. Uh, if you look at my Stuka, the uh, wings are gull winged. And I had to roll the flap and the aileron uh, bones uh, to facilitate the actual roll of the flap out of the wing and uh, the ailerons with the wings. So in this case, it's pretty straight on. Uh, so we can just take and scale it. on the y-axis, scale on the y, and pull it straight back. And again, we're going to look down here at the actual um, pivot point, and we want to make sure that that pivot point is center of where we want it to be. Okay, same thing for the flap. So. tailwheel pivot what I want to do with that one is I want the pivot point to be in the center of the upper um, bracket of the pivot arm so I'm going to select that whole face move my cursor there I'm going to select the bone and move the bone there cursor to selected selection to cursor and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab these two vertices here because I want the uh, tail uh, pivot point to be forward or to the rear of the airplane. I'm going to move my cursor there. I'm going to grab the tail now. Selection the cursor. And seven, have a look at the roll. Should be straight, which is good. Now I can just scale it back on the y-axis. Make the bone nice and small. And this is now in place. Okay, now for the tail wheel, we don't want this to be associated to the parent bone, uh, the parent bone being the bit fuselage. We want it to be the actual tail wheel pivot so that when the wheel pivots, the, uh, when the, the bracket pivots, the wheel goes with it. So we have to change the relationship. And simply just like that. Now you can see the connection line between the tail wheel pivot and the tail wheel. This is now the parent for that particular bone. So let's get it into place now. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, now that we've got the bones all done, uh, basically what we have to do is we have to assign all the control surfaces to the bones. We'll do that in the next video. Uh, it's time to close this one off, so I'm going to say Private Jack out.